God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. Hey, and I'm fired up today more than usual. Now, you know yourself that when you serve the Lord, you tend to just get high on life. Grateful that God lets you live to see another day. Grateful, praise God, that you're able to enjoy the beautiful warmth of the summer the cold and the coolness of the winter and the mildness of both the spring and the fall, even though sometimes it gets hot in the spring, cold in the spring, hot in the fall, cold in the fall, fall of the year. And, you know, we're, we're, we're in that time. But I'm grateful to be alive today and I'm grateful to be coming to you in the name of the Lord, celebrating Jesus Pride Month it's Jesus Pride all month long. Praise the Lord. Do you see it, my friends? I've been waving this flag and, and uh, I'm having a ball. I'm having a ball during the month of June. Now, you know, I got my big one right here. My, my big uh, cape. Praise God that I came on showing you last time and I am excited and people are contacting me everywhere wanting to know how they can get the seven colors, wanting to know, praise the Lord, how they can get it, how they can display it. We're putting the word out there and I am so excited for what the God of the Bible is doing. Now, I want to share something with you because I, I got and uh, before I get to the invite, because listen to me, I need you to listen closely because uh, uh, there are so many things going on. Now, I have in my hand mm, a story. Now, listen to this. It's entitled A Message to My Fellow Christians. And, and, and it says this. I hope you're having a super uncomfortable pride month. I know from painful, hard-earned experiences what discomfort can do to change minds. So this is written uh, by uh, Catherine Backstrom. Catherine Backstrom. This was written June the 18th, 2024. So this is a, this is a, a recent Catherine uh, uh, Backstrom, uh, B-A-C-K-S-T-R-O-M, uh, is... Uh, the writer, Mary Catherine. So let me just read a little bit of this to you. Amen. Today, she says, I was a small town conservative girl when my husband and I relocated uh, to Orlando, Florida. So she was a small town conservative girl. I don't know a small town conservative equals a Christian, but this is what the article says. Small town conservative girl before we moved to Orlando, Florida. I spent my time going from work to the barn, work to the barn, crying as I brush my horse's mane. Okay, so I guess uh, they, they had horses, and uh, I don't know where her husband was, but she spent her time going from work to the barn. I'll never make friends in this town. I sobbed over the phone to my mom one night. Uh, Gary, I guess her husband just dropped her off and left her because she was going from work to the barn, work to the barn. And she's crying that she won't make fun, make friends. And I want to know why was your husband? <laughs> the next day at work, I met Matt. Now she met Matt. Uh, he was a, he had a brilliant smile and a Southern, Southern drawl. And he sounded like home. He loved horses too, having spent years doing rodeo. Our friendship was, an, it was instant and easy. He visited the barn and taught me how to lasso. And on our lunch break, he would gush about his love, uh, the, about the love of his life, Jesse. I assumed Jesse was a girl. But that assumption turned out to be wrong when we all met for lunch one day. I couldn't conceal my shock. Oh my gosh, Matt, you're, now you know I don't call him gay, but I'm reading the story. You're gay. And Matt said, um, duh, he laughed. Did he ask the cowboy hat throw you off? Now, Brother Gary, put the, put the, put the picture of the, of the article here on the, on the screen. Gary's showing it to you now. Uh, I, I guess the cowboy hat threw her off because uh, I would assume at a glance that the guy was homosexual. Then I remember that he had recently pointed out a bar 
a few blocks from my house. He mentioned that it was a fun place to go. I replied that one day we should, but I hadn't noticed the rainbow details. Okay, now this girl, she didn't seem to have much, uh, she, didn't, she didn't seem to pay much attention to things. He says, okay, he says, MK, this is the girl's name, Mary Catherine, MK, your gator isn't, uh, isn't manu, uh, malfunctioning. It's completely non-existent. Now on this, I agree with good old Matt because she should have been able to tell right off that Matt was a homosexual. And you know, it's amazing the number of Christians who pretend not to know. I don't get you cats at all. You pretend not to know. Matt and Jesse told me fun stories about drag cream, dr drag contests, and bouncers who wore shorty shorts. They insisted I would love Thursday night, uh, Thursday night's uh, karaoke, but I assured them that it wasn't my scene. I blushed and giggled a little at the idea. It sounded fun if not a bit scandalous. A week or so after a hilarious lunch date, I was driving home from my friend's house and when I witnessed a young lady get struck by a car, I swerved to the side of the road, jumped out of my vehicle screaming. In, in an instant, people poured out of the bar to assist uh, in, in the emergency. I barely registered that they were dressed flamboyantly that makeup didn't strike me as strange. <laughs> In that moment, we were all scared human beings. Their hearts were racing just like mine. A drag queen cradled the woman's head in his hands as, as I called the police. That quote the drag queen, don't move, baby girl. He comforted the woman. Don't mess up these pretty braids. Mm -hmm. Make sure you don't mess up the braids. It was a fraction of a moment that it felt like forever. I can still hear her crying for mama. Thankfully, the club was a block from the hospital. The ambulance arrived in an instant. When the lights and the sirens finally faded, my adrenaline couldn't handle the scene. It was like every one of us uh, had been shaken like soft drinks, and in that moment, we had all cracked open. There were hugs and prayer, prayers exchanged between strangers. I remember someone humming a hymn. Then slowly, one by one, the crowd dispersed. We had to go back to our lives, but not before exchanging a couple of phone numbers, promising to disperse any updates. I called my friends, Matt and Jesse. I knew the homosexual community was close, was a close one, and I wondered if they had heard any news. Matt asked around, but didn't hear much. Don't worry, he said, we will know more tomorrow. I decided, to stay up until then. The next morning, you know, I'm still wondering, where's her husband? The next morning, we were all, we all went to breakfast with the drag queens who had started a text thread for, uh, for an update. We bonded over hash browns and our collective trauma after uh, a coffee, just some Regular life stories. The woman we learned was in critical condition, two broken legs and a fractured spine. James, who had cradled her uh, head so gently, had probably saved her life. God saved her life. But uh, thank you, James, for, for holding her head. Turns out he had done so with great intention because not only was he a drag queen, but once a month, he returned to his rural hometown to serve as a medic uh, for the volunteer fire department. I bet he took off the drag uh, outfit then. <laughs> and uh, uh, a hero, an absolute gem of a human being. Two years later, those same gentle heroes were working uh, their jobs at Pulse when a hate-crazed terrorist 
uh, made his way through the doors with a semi-automatic rifle when he uh, first started shooting. Some of the patrons kept dancing. They they thought it was part of the music. That detail never fails to wreck my heart. They they just kept dancing. They just kept they danced, and I'll never forget the pit in my stomach as I, I stared at my phone through the night, praying each name, praying each name in that years long text thread was sleeping at home in their beds. After four sleepless nights, we received confirmation. Two of the group had been working. Both had escaped and survived the massacre. But it wasn't a happy ending. And the, the story stops right here. Now, concerning the man that shot the, in, the, in the nightclub. Everybody knows that that was wrong. And everybody knows that that man was not motivated by biblical Christianity. He was not motivated by Jesus Christ. He was not motivated by the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, he was not motivated by anything that was right nor godly. And we wholeheartedly and every Christian that I know of denounced that man, man's murderous, godless actions. Now, I don't know why uh, mentioning that would be in a story, a message to my fellow Christians. I hope you're having a super uncomfortable pride month. No one has ever, Brother Gary, I didn't talk to anybody who's ever even hinted that a member of the LBGTQ plus and whatever other alphabet go in it can't show compassion, that they would not help a person who had been hit by a car, that they would not do everything that they can do or could do to save a life. I've never heard anybody say that. As a matter of fact, I would, I would fully expect that they would. I mean, when you read Genesis chapter number 19, when the angels came to the city of Sodom and uh, uh, we learned that Lot sat in the gate at the city, that is, Lot was with the rulers of the city in Genesis chapter number 19. When we read Genesis chapter number 13, we read that the city was a beautiful city, well watered, well manicured, a, gl a glorious place, a beautiful place. So, no one, I mean, is, is, is shocked that uh, a drag queen or two or ten would go out uh, if someone got hit by a car and would show love and compassion. Uh, look at the, the, the numbers of heterosexuals and Christians who, by the way, built the first hospitals. Christians who were the main ones who started the YMCAs and different things like that. Christians who have historically, down through the years, fed the poor, visited people in prison, shown great kindness. Christians, praise the Lord, who in most uh, many disasters are the first ones to arrive and the last ones to leave. Christians who show love every day every day, we, who pray for the salvation of souls every day, Christians, Christians, who do these things on a regular basis. Matter of fact, they're doing so much, my Christians, that it's not even news. Because if, I, if she would have written this article and said some Christians uh, stepped out of the church and they helped a the young lady, you would have read the article and said, well, that's what they're supposed to do because they're Christians. Um, it appears to me that this brunette uh, is very confused. Now, I still don't know, Brother Gary, and I don't expect you to tell me. I don't know what happened to her husband if she, if she was that lonely. And uh, I, I don't understand how Matt and Jesse could have that kind of effect. But then when she reads 
uh, about what happens. It, it certainly shows that the Bible is right. The Bible warns uh, evil communications, corrupt good manners. So I want to say to those of you who are watching, and I know I'm going long, but for those who are watching, be careful who you have coffee <laughs> and hash browns with. Maybe they put something in the hash browns that, that took away her ability to remember, I don't know, scriptures. <laughs> so uh, the hash browns and the coffee and jokes and, and, and stories about immoral behavior, stories about men being dressed in female clothing and females being dressed in male clothing and uh, a shared love for horses and being taught how to lasso a horse. That's all it took to get old Mary Catherine Backstrom to write an article and to throw a punch at her fellow Christians. Well, this Christian says to you, we're having a ball woo, 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 during this time of the month because we're right, because the Bible is right. And yes, our heart breaks for Matt, for Jesse, for James, for all those who are walking in that lifestyle. No, there's no way in this world we would condone anybody shooting up a nightclub. But for you to try and um, write an article, uh, and the thing, Gary Taylor, written by a woman, because it's just filled with so much emotion. So much emotion. Oh, my. And she had her giggles. Uh, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to leave this alone because it opens the door to just, you know, to, to wonder so many other things. I mean, I'm still wondering, where was, where, where was your husband? Did he become a part of the community? Was he a part of the community? Why is it that you could be married and not recognize that good old Matt was a homosexual? And uh, 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 and how, Mr. Husband, did you leave your wife to the point that all she did was went to work and, and went to the barn and cried over the horses, cried over the horses. She brushed the horse and cried. I'll never make friends in this hometown. Where were you? Where were you, husband? Gary, I want to know where the husband was. Now I'm out of time on this one. So, uh, Mary Catherine, uh, we're praying for you. We're in our AIM conference this week. We're having a ball here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. Matter of fact, we're having a tremendous time. This is our first AIM conference that is chaired by the pastor, the pastor Charles Washington Sr. What a tremendous man of God he is. He is the pastor of New Generations Church of God in Christ, and the Lord is using him in a mighty way. And it is also the very first AIM conference where the new a newly appointed uh, chair lady of the youth department, chair lady Crystal Amanchuku. Uh, uh, she preached on, on, on Tuesday night and she's, uh, she's serving, this is her first year, serving as chair lady and they too are doing a tremendous job. And tonight, 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 I want you to tune in. I will be here, but I will not be preaching. Pastor Washington is going to deliver the word of the Lord tonight here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for our AIM, AIM conference and uh, uh, auxiliaries in ministry conference. And yours truly will be preaching tomorrow night. Yes, Friday night, the 21st. I will be preaching the word of the Lord right here. And I want you to join me. And we will be here Sunday preaching the word of the Lord. Now I've gone long. Thank you for your patience. I love you. But I had to share this story. And, uh, and if, uh, if you all find out where uh, Mary Catherine's husband were, was, write me and let me know. <laughs> I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for gospel preaching and teaching. Pastor Washington is going to preach and you, my friends, are going to be blessed. I'll see you right here.